Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. I, I've been dealing with the issue of misogyny, hatred of women, on the uh, astral plane uh, through last night. And, uh, and with a lot of other people have joined in. And I've come to some startling interim conclusions that I feel may help abate the energy of misogyny on the astral plane. Um, uh, there's a type of um, rhythm that you can use and words that you can use that to me are reminiscent of, of a mother's heartbeat. And I think that the, that the issue of the motherly love and the mother's heartbeat are very important uh, in cases of misogyny, hatred of women. So I will give you uh, just a few examples. Um, when men are misogynists on the astral plane, they cluster together in astral rape g gangs and descend upon women in groups of six to nine, twelve. Um, and, and while they are resting or sleeping or unconscious in some way, they descend upon them and begin uh, a chant that, that involves astral rape. And uh, this has to do with a few things. It has to do with um, arrogance, you could say, or a lack of relationship to the mother, which results in lack of empathy and uh, bonding, male, increased male bonding, not counterbalanced by, by the feelings of empathy and, and love like a mother would have. So, so they descend. They suddenly descend. I know some of you who are hearing this have experienced this feeling of astral rape or astral gangbang, or some say other things, use other words for it. Um, and so when they descend, what you say is, uh -huh, and paying attention to the, the tone of the voice and the rhythm of the voice, right? I am irresponsive to your plea. I am irresponsive to your plea. And so the next bit of banter may be have something to do with uh, kind of a taunt, a very mild taunt, and it goes like this. I thought you loved me more than anything. Seeming sincere, right? So, and this is as far as I've got is to the response of this. It goes like this. And you'll notice it has the same tone and the so same rhythm as the last, um, as the last thing. It goes like this. That dandelion thing is not for me. That dandelion thing is not for me. So that diffuses, somehow diffuses the energy of, um, of misogyny, hatred of women on the astral plane. And I think that it will be sufficient, even though it's incomplete, it will be sufficient to allow you to phrase your own, um, your own concepts, your own responses in your own terms if you will use the same sort of soothing tone and the same rhythm, the same number of syllables and the same accents, like in poetry. All right, everyone. Very good luck with this. I hope this works because the turning of the Atlantean age, which is just taking place right now, back to an era of balance of the divine masculine and feminine requires us to find a pacific counter to the energies of misogyny that have risen to a crescendo in 2012 and are now beginning to abate. I just did some research on the um, rhythm, uh, the accents and the rhythm of the two examples that I gave, and I found out it's an example, they're both examples, of iambic tetrameter that's more or less uh, sets of an unstressed syllable followed by a stressed syllable. That's the iamb. It's um, it's the, the rhythm of the heartbeat.
Yes. And tetrameter means that there's four such sets of syllables in a line. A good example of it is, is Joyce Kilmer's poem called The Tree, um, which everybody knows. And so, and so the rhythm goes like this. It goes da-da, 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 da-da. One unstressed syllable followed by a stressed syllable and four of these. Okay. As you can tell, it is a feeling. It's a feeling of a steady heartbeat, the loving heartbeat of a mother, the very first rhythm that a child ever knows. While still unborn, it feels that rhythm. So it's a very reassuring, calming rhythm, and it helps in cases of, of, of say, anger or upset or rage or even... Uh, unbridled sexual attraction. It helps calm a person's heart, I feel. Um, and it's worth noting that that there are other examples of, of the iambic um, poetry. For example, the one that I always loved, iambic pentameter, which is five sets of iambic uh, syllables. So that, to me, that feels kind of like a, a horse in a slow gallop across a beautiful summer meadow. <laughs> there are examples of iambic pentameter in the writing of William Shakespeare, John Donne, and um, Chaucer. So, so I, you know, I think that iambic pentameter gained popularity because in those days people often rode horseback and that galloping feeling, that slow galloping feeling was something that allowed them to compose poetry while on the hunt, for example, or going to war or just riding a horse for the fun of it. So, And reciting that poetry probably reminded them of all those um, adventures that they had on horseback in their lives. <laughs>